If you're watching this video, chances are you're a hybrid shooter and you love the camera calibration tool in Lightroom and Camera Raw. In fact, you love it so much that you would like to have it inside of Final Cut. I apply the camera calibration plugin and then I start by altering the blue primaries a little bit, decrease the saturation just a tap and increase the red primary slider, shift it a little bit to the right so I can get these nice yellow ish, yellowish qualities in the highlights a little more. Then I play around with the greens. Yeah, that warms it up a little bit. Then I may tint the shadows a little bit magenta. Okay, we haven't gone too far, but let's have a look at the before and after. This is before, this is after. Let's play around with the camera calibration in this shot. I think I start by shifting the reds a little bit towards magenta so we can warm these highlights a little bit. Then the greens maybe a little bit towards cyan and let's see what we are able to do with the blues. Okay shifting the blues to the left lightens up these neon signs nicely so I might have to compensate for this by bringing the reds a little bit back. Yeah, let's have a look at the before and after. This is before, this is after. If we pull up our scopes, uh, let me do this, you can see that the camera calibration tool just introduced a nice complementary color scheme or just refined the overall complementary color scheme because if we have a look at the before, it was actually kind of going on but we shifted the yellows a little bit more towards red and just made the look a little bit more concise. As you can see here, before, after. Okay, let's go to the last shot I have prepared and this one is quite interesting as well. Again, I apply the camera calibration plugin and we start by adjusting the blues first. Let me see. Yeah, this looks interesting. Okay, what do the greens do? Interesting. We can achieve very muted green tones and very, very strong uh, reds just by altering these two sliders. And what do the reds do? Okay, they cool it off a little bit and I think I might be fine. So this is the before, this is the after. And this literally took like 10 seconds. This is what I meant. Camera calibration gets used so far in so little time. And you can use camera calibration to experiment too. So what if I want to do the opposite? So let's reset everything and maybe I want to achieve some very dreamy and muted green tones. So I might shift the greens a little bit towards the right. You can see that these greens over here are getting already pretty muted. And let's have a look what the reds do. Okay, this looks pretty awesome. I will decrease the saturation as well. And here we go, 15 seconds later, an entirely different look. Again, let's pull up our vector scope and have a look at what's going on. So this is before, this is after. You can see that we introduced almost a triadic color scheme between red, green and yellow. And it took like 15 seconds. That's so great. As you can see, the camera calibration tool is a nice tool to steer the ship broadly in the right direction. You can get it on my website. I put a link in the video description below. However, there is one disclaimer. This plugin does not actually perform camera calibration. But what does that even mean? In order to answer this question, we need to understand what camera calibration actually does. Imagine your photograph, like so, and a pixel of it. For example, this one. This pixel has a red, green and blue value. For example, 75, 128 and 97. If you want to change the color, and or its properties, namely hue, saturation, illuminance, you would use an HSL adjustment. HSL adjustment. But what does the HSL adjustment actually do? So the HSL adjustment deals with these color values. You do your adjustments and the result of the HSL adjustment is a new set of values for this given pixel, red, green and blue. And maybe the result is 80, 125 and 77. Okay, so far so good. But where do red, green and blue, the so-called primaries, actually come from in the first place? And who defines what red is, what green is and what blue is? So let's have an oversimplified look at the raw decoding signal chain or the so-called image processing pipeline. You capture something with your camera, my magnificent camera drawing here, and you put it onto your SD card. This now 
is raw data. The raw data needs to be decoded in order to produce the final image. And this process is called, surprise, surprise, raw decoding. Raw decoding is the first step of the signal chain. So you can think of your signal chain like this. From left, the input, to the right, the final image. Everything else like HSL adjustments, curves, comes afterwards. And this is the stage where the image is compiled. I just write image here so we know what's going on. So this is the breaking point here, this line. This means during the raw decoding, the raw sensor data gets interpreted into red, green and blue values for each and every pixel that make up your final photograph. For the sake of oversimplification, let's call this the process process. Okay, like this. And this will be red, green and blue and red, green and blue for each pixel will contribute to the overall image. As I mentioned before, the process is an act of interpretation. And this is where camera calibration allows you to change this interpretation. So camera calibration happens here in the first step of the signal chain. This then doesn't mean the color values for each pixel change like in our example from before, 75, 128, 97, and so on and so forth. This actually means that the very components change. So the mix stays the same, but the actual definition of red, green, and blue change. And since there is a red, green, and blue value for each pixel of your image, the entire image will be affected if you change just one parameter, for example, the blue primaries by using the blue primary slider. In contrast, the HSL adjustment deals with the actual mix to alter the color parameters like hue, saturation, and luminance. So this is the actual reason why camera calibration exists in the first place, to give you a chance to alter the interpretation of the sensor data. Even though the intention for this tool is very technical, so many people adore it for its color grading capabilities. Because again, just one slider affects all of the pixels in your image and the overall color mix. Let's try to wrap it up here. You can think of HSL curves and so on and so forth as changing the mix, whereas camera calibration changes the actual mixing ingredients. With this knowledge in mind, the sentence from before, please keep in mind that this plugin does not actually perform camera calibration, makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it? Okay, but there is another layer to it. Even if you shoot raw footage and bring it into Final Cut, the camera calibration plugin still wouldn't perform camera calibration. Because Final Cut decodes raw files different than Adobe. And raw video files are something different than raw photo files. Furthermore, the plugin would still be in the wrong place of the signal chain. Almost every plugin you put into the inspector deals with the image after it's being compiled. So inside the inspector, we are here after the actual image is compiled. Then the question arises, what does this plugin actually do? It performs a complex set of HSL adjustments that mimic the effects of camera calibration. When I created this plugin, I studied the camera calibration tool in Lightroom with many real world photographs and a color checker. Then I did some measurements and I was able to create this plugin. And as you saw in the beginning, I think it's yeah, a pretty convincing camera calibration effect. If your intent is to use it for color grading, you're absolutely good to go. 